Yes, it's an it's a unusual situation uh, on the surface of things uh, with the, uh, the level of geopolitical risk that we're seeing uh, across, the, uh, across the region. One would have expected crude oil prices to be higher than they are now, or indeed not to have seen the falls that we've seen. Uh, in short, uh, the prices come off because, uh, very simply, supply output hasn't actually been disrupted. Uh, with respect to Iraq, uh, all of the production and the output uh, from the country is, uh, is generally concentrated in the south of the country. And uh, in the north, where we have had uh, U.S. military strikes, uh, the oil produced in that region, in the Kurdish region, is not entirely available uh, to international markets. And the pipeline that was taking some of that crude out through into, uh, into Turkey was destroyed earlier this year. So really, uh, uh, we've, uh, we haven't seen anything uh, uh, to uh, uh, any, any supply disruption to speak of, which is why prices have drifted lower. The recent move lower has been, uh, over the last few days, has been driven by the uh, latest IEA report, uh, generally uh, revising down their demand forecasts for crude very slightly for this year. And, uh, and notwithstanding that, we've had uh, uh, inventories uh, uh, within Europe and Asia on the crude side uh, pretty high, uh, lackluster physical demand, uh, and these have collectively been depressing uh, the market from the supply-demand uh, side of things. I think that this certainly it's true to say that the Chinese economy is recovering now. It is, it's in much better uh, state than, than what we anticipated earlier this year and indeed even going back to last year when many people were forecasting a hard landing and, a, and quite a significant potential slowdown in China. Uh, in terms of oil demand, it is still very stable. It's rising slowly. So uh, I, I don't see any, uh, any uh, severe disturbances on that front uh, from the norm. Yes, I think it's questionable as to whether it actually ever had it in the first place. Uh, uh, there's perhaps a, uh, an, uh, a, a curious focus on gold uh, right now. It's, it's understandable considering how much gold uh, fell last year, uh, it was a significant move down. Um, but of late, uh, and certainly over the last four months or so, Gold has actually been within an extremely tight range, less than a hundred dollar range. And if you if you go back and rewind and you look at the spectrum of geopolitical events and risks that we've had from the Ukraine right through to the situation in Iraq, gold really hasn't responded at all. In fact, any meaningful rallies uh, tend to be sold quite quickly. Um, and in the in the context of the broader macroeconomic framework, that of rising rates in the U.S., um, that is very bearish for gold, and it's 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 quite difficult to justify uh, a long position or a fresh long position in gold uh, with that framework in place. So we see gold lower uh, for the rest of this year, uh, not. Too much more, but down to around 1,250. I think we've been down to about 1,248 this year, so about another 50, 50, 60 dollars from current levels.